ahead on early birds, a slow start and a fast rising challenge for the Falcons. And your mindset's got to be, yeah, we didn't like what happened to hole one. We got 71. Just like those guys coming out of the first round of those majors, it's a, it's a physical, mental grind, and that's what the NFL is. As Atlanta prepares for the champs, we get you ready for week two. AJ Terrell talks Tom Brady and being a high school football fan, plus shock at the big board and Joe Hamilton on the QB dilemma in Dogtown. That more ahead on Early Birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes Benz. All right, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. The Falcons stumbled in week one, but hey, Glass Half Full says they've got a great opportunity to right the ship tomorrow. Let's get things started with the opening drive. So, DJ, that was Glass Half Full. Doing so will be difficult against Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champions. Uh, no doubt about it. I mean, we all know the accolades of Tom Brady and what he's done over the years, and he continues to play at a high level. We got to find a way to get to him. We got to find a way to distract him. We got to find a way to get him off his spot. We have to flush the Tom Brady. As tough as that sounds, we have to find a way to do it because if not, he will continue the same trend. All right, Arthur Smith, the head coach, no surprise. Tons of respect for the Buccaneers and their future Hall of Fame QB. That's a very good veteran team. They've won. Uh, you know, they won, I believe, nine in a row, including last year. Head on early birds, a slow start and a fast rising challenge for the Falcons. And your mindset's got to be, yeah, we didn't like what happened to hole one. We got 71, just like those guys come out of the first round of those majors. It's a, it's a physical, mental grind, and that's what the NFL is. As Atlanta prepares for the champs, we get you ready for week two. AJ Terrell talks Tom Brady and being a high school football fan, plus shock at the big board and Joe Hamilton on the QB dilemma in Dogtown. That more ahead on Early Birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes Benz. All right, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. The Falcons stumbled in week one, but Glass Half Full says they've got a great opportunity to right the ship tomorrow. Let's get things started with the opening drive and shock. Doing so is going to be uh, not so easy against Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. Yeah, Justin, no doubt about that. He has been one of the more dynamic players in our entire league because of his longevity. He has tons of accolades. He's seen everything, so it's going to be tough to get to Brady, but we have to find a way to get off the spot. We got to find a way to fluster him, confuse him. As hard as that may be, you have to find a way to do that because if not, it may be the same old task. All right, other than that, piece of cake, right? Love Arthur that. Smith, uh, <laughs> no surprise from the coach. Tons of respect for the Buccaneers and their future Hall of Fame QB. That's a very good veteran team. They've won, uh, you know, they won, I believe, nine in a row, including last year. Uh, that's a team, you know, it's you're talking about the tale of two seasons. I mean, you look at them last year, and then they, they drew a line in the sand, and they continued to improve, and everybody saw what they did. And, and it's everybody. But the one thing I do know about Tom Brady is, is going to say he's probably the best or, or one of the best I've ever seen with situational football. You make mistakes, he's going to expose you. You make errors. All right, continuing the opening drive now. It, it's week one, Shock, and we're doing this already. Questioning the protection of Matt Ryan, especially the interior O-line. The Eagles got to the Falcons quarterback a whole bunch, way too much than you like. Tampa Bay's tough front up front, tough up front. Uh, Vita Vea inside. So so what do they do? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, you're talking about it. Dominic Sue as well. Pierre Paul, if he plays, I mean, there are a bunch of guys who can really get after the quarterback, but I think you have to get rid of it fast. You can't hold on to it. You can't have opportunities where Matt's sitting back there on a the seven step drop and you have an opportunity to get to him. Get rid of the football, move him, do some play action, get him on the edges. All all those things I help will help a young offensive line get going. I think that's a bigger part of it. All right, Matt Ryan says his young offensive line have handled the week like pros. For some of these young guys, it's their first real opportunity, you know, to have a full game evaluation and 
uh, learn from that and, and uh, make the adjustments. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be good for them. I think you can learn a lot early in the season. You know, I remember myself just from week to week uh, as a young player making huge strides. And as we wrap up the opening drive, DJ, Tom Brady. I mean, we, we, we mentioned him once or twice already. He doesn't eat bread and he doesn't lose to the Falcons. So, Shock, how do they hand the Golden Boy career loss number one against Atlanta? We got to turn him over. I think that's the only way. Take possessions away from him. Don't allow him to have those long extended drives. And don't give him the deep ball like we see here. They live on these deep plays. They live on these big momentum plays. Don't give them those. Turn the football over and force Brady to look average. As hard as that will be, if you do that, we can get a W on Brady. We'll see if they can do that. Falcons and Buccaneers tomorrow here on Fox 5. Welcome into Early Birds alongside former Falcons and UGA quarterback DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder and Atlanta. Well, they projected confidence in Flowery Branch all week long. So DJ Brady aside, that's a big part of it, of right. course. How do they make all that confidence pay off? Well, I think you first off, you can't do what you did last week. You can't have the foolish penalties. You can't have the false starts. You can't be behind the chains. You have to find ways that you're doing things the right way as far as on both sides of the ball, getting lined up, getting in position, but you can't hurt yourself in game that puts you behind the chains or give them reasons where you're just giving stuff away. So play smart football, but don't do what you did last week. That's for sure. Won't be easy. Falcons <laughs> taking on the Buccaneers. Shock time to get your Jack Sparrow on because Hi, we Jack. know you are the captain. Go warm up the telestrator. We will see you in a few. But first, Falcons cornerback AJ Terrell has a favorite word. When we talked earlier this week, just about every one of his answers included the word compete. That he does every Sunday and that he did during training camp, often in very entertaining tangles with Calvin Ridley. I asked Terrell about that and what he gains from squaring off so often with the Falcons top receiver at practice and in camp. <laughs> You know, I gained a lot each day we came out and competed. Uh, you know, like I've been said before, you know, I'm gonna give him my best, he gave me his best, and we just compete every day. Just get ready for uh, games on Sunday, so we just compete every day. Is that something that's agreed upon? Is it kind of unspoken that you two would go head to head so often? It's really just, you know, expected between um, me and him. Like when we line up, we just know to just go all out and just, you know, compete against each other. You know, just get ready. So you're kind of a quiet guy when we talk to you. Now with a year and the game in the books, how much do you talk on the field when you're lined up across from wide receiver? Uh, you know, I, you know, I play my game. Uh, I don't let you know too much get up, get me out of my comfort zone. And uh, if any chirping or whatever happens, you know. Glad to you know, be with it, talk, you know, we can go back and forth all we want. You were two years old when Tom Brady made his debut, but he was dominating when you were kind of getting into football. Do you remember watching him on those Patriots teams growing up? Yeah, definitely remember him all around the league, just making plays and, you know, going to championship Super Bowls. And he's still doing it today, so, you know, it's definitely a blessing to, you know, be here today playing against him. You guys went against him twice last year, and he had a lot of success. He threw for 390 both times, six touchdowns. What was he able to do last year against you guys that you have to stop him from doing this time? Uh, you know, just he just made more plays. Um, we just got to stop that uh, going into this week and uh, just continue to look at our uh, keys on film and just being able to defend it. So when we heard from Coach Smith earlier, he told us, he told you guys this was like a golf tournament, right? You guys had a bad first hole, but you got a whole bunch left. How do you guys take what happened in week one, shove it aside, and turn things around for a, a tough week two? All right, it, you know, it's, it, it should be you know, simple. Just got to put things to rest, uh, continue. You know, we got 16 games left, so being able to look forward, have short-term memory, and uh, just be able to uh, come back this uh, following week, so we good. And then, you know, we're a big high school football station. Now being back second year in town, what's it like being a high school football fan, seeing your brother at Westlake? It's definitely a blessing just going back and just, you know, being able to show face uh, often and, uh, you know, just give back a little bit. And uh, just being in the presence of, of my high school is definitely a blessing for myself and my little brother. It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. So cut the lights and let's get started. Well, if you remember last week, we talked about people who can affect a game. And defensively, it was a defensive lineman. Where this week, we're talking offense. And tomorrow, there's going to be a guy on the offensive side that can affect the game just as much as any defensive guy. And his name is Rob Gronkowski. And look at on this particular play here. Here's Rob Gronkowski. Here. He's going to start in his typical tight end position. But this particular play here, you have to get your hands on him. He's going to get a free release, and he's going to run right down the seam. When he runs down the seam, you have to get your hands on him. You got to reroute him. You got to get, get him off his track. But if you don't do that, he's going to have free access to run right down the middle 
the field. And as the play starts, you can see here, nobody gets their hands on him. Now he's got free access. Look at this. Nobody touches him. So now he's going to get into this linebacker because of his size, because of his speed. He can run. Now you don't reroute him. He gets to stay on this particular plane. And as you see, he finished it. And watch him go up and get this football. This is a physical receiver from the tight end spot. I say receiver, yes, because he plays like a receiver. You have to be able to fight through the hands there of Rob Gronkowski and get that ball. Now, here's another particular play that they use him as. You see him, he's in the same tight end spot here. He's in that tight end spot, but also they use him in multiple ways. He's a guy that can catch screens. He can go down the field vertical, but on this play, He's going to be used in the screen game. And you see here, they're going to dump it off to him. It's like three linemen out front. This is an excellent job of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers using Rob Gronkowski. We got to find out where he is at all times and make sure that we got a body on him and we reroute him because he can make you pay. Great breakdown, Shock. Thanks so much. More to come on Early Birds quarterbacks aplenty in the SEC East. Joe Hamilton's here to explain how the dogs should be handling things. Plus. There's varying amounts of responsibility um, de depending on how they scheme things. He is at the center of the action, but he might be doing a lot more than you or I realize. We're going deep with the Falcon Center next on Early Birds. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Birds is presented by Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. And brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felt. All right, we welcome in our college football expert, Joe Hamilton, former Georgia Tech QB. Let's start off in Athens, where Georgia getting ready to kick off SEC play against South Carolina. So, Joe, the dogs don't have a quarterback controversy because it's JT Daniels' job when he's healthy. But there's a little bit of QB drama in Athens. How do you think it's playing out? Well, first and foremost, I, I don't know when Coach Kirby Smart is going to play JT Daniels and what he thinks 100% healthy is for him going forward. Can you play my 92? Can you play my 95%? But you are absolutely right. It's JT Daniels' job to lose. But the backup, Stetson Bennett, Carson Beck. What I would want if I'm a player is that if Coach Kirby Smart, Todd Munkin, and any of those guys are very honest with you, saying this is how we're going to evaluate you through the week. And if we in the media don't know who's the starting quarterback, I think that's fine. But if Carson Beck or Stetson Bennett don't know until the end of the week and you're not communicating well, that might be a problem brewing in Athens going forward for the second, the second team quarterback. What, what a good problem to have. Who's going to be your backup because your starter is so set. Let's stay in the SEC. Another team with some quarterback questions. The Florida Gators taking on Alabama. Big SEC showdown today. Uh, Joe, any chance the Gators can run with the tide? Oh, absolutely. They can definitely run. You didn't say beat. You said run with the tide. They're going to run with the tide, and they're going to be very, very comfortable and confident they can get it done. But you can't not get it done with, without a mobile, elite, playmaking quarterback. Johnny Menzel, the dual-threat quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Keep an eye on Richardson because he might not, you know, surprise you in practice with the reads and the decision-making. But on Saturdays, when the lights, are, the lights are bright, he's a gamer. He's a ball player, so you got to have a, a script ready for him to take over this game as well. Yeah, and you got Emory Jones, former high five sports guy out of Hurst. He's been disappointing. We'll see. He'll have a chance on a big stage to turn that around. Uh, another big stage for your Yellow Jackets this week. They got win number one last week against Kennesaw State. Tough one against Clemson today. I'm not going to ask you to pick this game unless you want to pick the Jackets. Go for it. But nobody likes moral victories. But what would a, a win look like for Georgia Tech, even if they don't have more points at the end of the day? My goodness. Good quick Move the chains. No pre-snap errors. Clemson is good enough to where they can beat you on their own. They don't need your help. Make sure that if you have some trickums, or if you have some reverses, maybe some flea flickers or what have you in the game plan, onside kick, 
surprise me and you utilize that. When the big plays present themselves, you take advantage of it. And at the end of the day, me personally, because you asked me a direct question, I want to come out of halftime with at least Clemson starters playing and the game is not in hand already. I want to win. I believe we can win. That's the message in the locker room. Reality says that we're not good enough yet talent-wise, so I have to take some morality out of it. And I want to come out of the second half being at least in the game. Hey, and if Georgia Tech scores that upset, we will certainly talk about it next week. All right, Joe, enjoy the games today. We appreciate it. Shock, we'll send it over to you. All right, appreciate it, fellas. A lot of focus will be on the Falcons' offensive line this week. The man in the middle is Matt Hennessy, and there's much more to his job than just making sure Matt Ryan gets the ball exactly where he likes it. I can tell you from experience, trust me, the center's job is a crucial part of the offense's success. Now it's time to go deep with the Falcon center, Matt Hennessy. There's varying amounts of responsibility um, de depending on how they scheme things, but as a center, there is there's a good bit put on your plate. So as far as getting up to the line of scrimmage, um, there's obviously a winding play clock. Matt obviously has a cadence he goes through. So we'll go up there, there's multiple moving pieces schematically on our end as well as their end. I think of it more of a puzzle than anything, um, but you're also on the clock, so there's that stress put into it. You know, there's vocal things I, I do to, to get us all aligned. There is a stress in, in you know, having the winding play clock and, and getting everything coordinated. I mean, you realize that when you go you sit in the, the cold meeting room and your, your feet are up and you can kind of see everything and it looks pretty easy then you get out there and being out there is definitely a different thing but it's um it's a great challenge but I love I love being able to command it so is that something that you can practice like Matt could sit at home and practice call and play calls all night long can you you know pop in film and say okay here's what I would be doing as I'm getting to the line like kind of get those mental reps yeah yeah and I think that's what as far as becoming a, a better professional I think that's something that I've really tried to improve on really trying to put yourself within the film see how the alignments will be against you know opponent scout and then what we're doing put yourself on the clock and try to work through things it'll always be different when you're out there and you got like a 330 pound nose breathing on your neck but um but there's, there's definitely some some grounds to be gained there you're watching early birds presented by mercedes-benz on your official home for falcons football fox 5 atlanta Welcome back in to Early Birds. Well, the Falcons, of course, doing everything they can to head into week two with an as short as possible injury report. But so often during a season, injury decisions will go right up until game time. If it makes you sweat your fantasy football team, think about how the actual medical professionals feel. Here's Falcons team physician Kyle Hammond in this week's Emory Road to Recovery. That discussion is kind of on the hour kind of you know through Friday through Saturday if they're at the team hotel it's still getting treatment we're still talking about it and then come to the game three or four hours in advance we're doing treatment then we're getting ready we'll go out to the field usually a couple hours in advance and that athlete or that player will test whatever he's dealing with right we'll position specific things that he needs to do to perform and then he's got to feel safe right and I've got to feel safe for him that it's okay to play um, and that's how we make those decisions we usually try to make those at least a couple hours in advance of the game though um, just to give the coaches some some heads up but like I said they they don't love it that way and then I watch them and our training staff watches them too and we look for asymmetries we look for them favoring something we look for just subtleties in the way that they're running or cutting uh, where we may not only be worried about them injuring that same spot that they're dealing with, but possibly injuring something else because they're favoring some injury. So we're very careful with that, um, you know, and, and we, like I said, first and foremost, listen to the athlete. Uh, very interesting. I mean, DJ, last time I was a game time decision was when the coffee maker was broke in the morning. <laughs> Were you ever a, a game time decision? Yeah, I was a lot of times in, in college. And sometimes it was because the coach wanted to have a little competitive mm -hmm. advantage. But then there were times where I didn't know how I felt until I got onto the field that actual day or that actual morning to get out there and play. So sometimes you are a real game time decision. But then sometimes there is times where the coaches are trying to Play a little mind games <laughs> with these guys. All right, more to come on early birds. Despite the Falcons getting off to a slow start, they've got Tampa Bay's respect. You'll hear why next on Early Birds. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes Benz. The best or nothing. Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. 
All right, Falcons and Bucks tomorrow here on Fox 5. And there will certainly be a lot of experience on the field against one another. Tom Brady, the model of that, has been a quarterback in three different decades in the NFL. Matt Ryan, no slouch himself with over a decade of NFL experience brought to the table. But it, of course, doesn't just end with the players. Buccaneers head coach Bruce Arians has been in the NFL as far back as 1989. One man that he's had coaching experience against is none other, of course, than Falcons defensive coordinator, coordinator Dean Pease. Pease faced off with Arians in the AFC matchups while he was with the Ravens, and Arians was the offensive guru for the Steelers. Both men bring over 30 years of pro coaching experience to the table tomorrow. And besides that, Arians says he's been impressed with what he's seen from Falcons' new head coach, Arthur Smith. I've known Arthur for a while, yeah. Well, he was a GA at Memphis way back, and uh, done it. he's worked his way up, and he's a hell of a football coach. Totally different defensively. You know, um, Dean Pease is very multiple. Every front known to man, every blitz known to man, and uh, I think they're all still filling each other out, what they can do and what they can't do. So we've got to be ready for everything offensively. You know, Arthur's going to run the ball, and it's going to be the wide zone, wide zone, wide zone, bootleg, bootleg. And uh, but they, when they drop back to pass, Maddie, Maddie can put it out there, and he still throws the deep seven rounds as good as anybody. Well, we'll see if the Falcons can bounce back from that week one loss. Buccaneers and Falcons tomorrow afternoon here on Fox 5. Highlights, interviews, and so much more on the Dirty Bird Report tomorrow night at 11.30 p.m. Make sure to tune in as we wrap things up. Shock, one more matchup to watch tomorrow afternoon. I want to see A.J. Terrell take away Mike Evans, take away uh, Antonio Brown, take mm. away Godwin, take away one of those guys. Be effective, have a great game, and find a way to slow those bucks down. A lot of different weapons there for Tom Brady on offense. Uh, AJ J. Terrell can do his part. We saw him earlier in the one on one and we will see if he helps the Falcons to their first win. Well, that is it for us here on Early Birds. Make sure to join us right back here every Saturday at 830 for our quarterback DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. Make it a great weekend.